the stage. How are, is everybody doing? CES 2019 day two. We're day two already of this four day show. And if you don't know the statistics, we've got 44 programs throughout this entire uh, conference. And if you miss any of the programs, it will be posted on Nikon Live so you can go back and see it. Or if you want to see it again, you can do that uh, at Nikon Live. So education and inspiration, that's what we're here for. We want you to learn about photography while you're here in the Nikon booth or if you're tuning in live. And if you've ever tried to make a portrait on the fly, especially of a celebrity or athlete, you'll understand how trying that is because you don't have a lot of time to do it. So if you're challenged about time and you want to now learn how to make those portrait work, portraits work, let me introduce to the Nikon Theater stage, Nikon Ambassador, Mr. Joey Terrell. He's going to show you how it happens, show you his magic. Thank you. Thank you. Morning, everybody. How are you? Thanks for coming out. Um, I do a lot of different kinds of work, but the one thing that is common in all of my work is I never have enough time. And I think that's true for all of us photographers. We never have enough time to get the things we want to get done, to make the pictures we want to make. So I do a lot of work that involves athletes, celebrities, people like that. They have less time than most for sure. They're willing to give you less time. This particular picture I put up first because it's the shortest photo shoot I've ever done in my life. It was 86 seconds long. And I know that because, you know, in the camera you have metadata that tells you. So from the first frame to the last, I had 86 seconds. Now that's a little bit deceiving simply because I spent three and a half hours before the 86 seconds. And that's kind of the trick. If you can get a little bit of time up, up front, you can make up the most of the time you have with the subject. Another very high profile, Ariana Grande, same kind of thing. You, you oftentimes have to set up sets where you build a set over here and a set over here and a set over here. And then in the allotted time that the person gives you, you just move them from place to place and you make it as efficient as you possibly can. But it's really a matter of for me, I don't know about you guys, but when I have a, 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 a very high profile person in front of me, I feel that clock ticking in my head. So I want to be as prepared as possible. And the way that I get there is by getting ready as, as early as possible. And then everything just becomes a connection between me and the subject. One of the things that I love to do is light things. Use light in a way that tells a story. I often say that there's a difference between taking pictures and making pictures. For, for me, I personally love to make pictures. Start with nothing and sort of create something out of nothing. An example is like this. There's four lights going on in this photograph, but hopefully it looks like there's not a whole lot going on. It looks like natural sunlight and whatnot. It isn't. It's all created light because, as you know, the sun continues to move. And if you don't get the shot that you want while the sun is in the perfect position, you've lost the shot. If you use your own light, you can stay there all day, assuming the subject allows you to, and you can make whatever picture you want. Interesting story. This is a, 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 an amazing golf course architect. He designed some of the greatest golf courses in the world. And I needed to make a portrait of him, but the challenge was his office was very small and what are you going to do and so on. So we found this vacant office and what I did is I took a, uh, a design of, his, of one of his golf courses and I taped it up on the window of an office. So I'm outside the office looking through a window where that's taped up and then he's on the inside of the office where I have light going through the window and then behind him as well. The point is, is that one of the challenges of doing, working with people, working with um, people who are time constrained, is you have to find solutions. And if you can find solutions to, to nearly anything, you'll always have work in photography. Smokey Robinson, the great singer. This is an example of where I didn't use any light. The time was so limited it was, you know what, there's some great window light here. I'm just going to use a window. And I used a reflector. I had an assistant use a reflector back in here. And a very, very shallow depth of field so that the emphasis went right to his eyes. 
I use that kind of technique a lot because I want to have the viewer look right where I want them to look. I don't want them to look over there or over there. I want them to look right where I want them to look. And one of the great ways to do that is to use a lens and an appropriate aperture to get that kind of a, a look. One of my favorite lenses to use is something called a perspective control lens, which allows you to maintain vertical and horizontal lines in a photograph. You'll notice that the lines are all straight. And the, the only way you can get that is either you align the camera perfectly with the subject, which isn't often possible because you're either higher or lower than the subject, which means the minute you tilt the camera down or up, things begin to what's called keystone which is they go like this or they go like that. But what you can do with a perspective control lens is you can raise or lower the front of the lens separate from the camera itself. It's a fantastic lens. The other thing going on here that's, that I think is interesting and I wanted to mention is you'll notice that the color balance is such that what I did is I set the camera up to, to photograph with a particular white balance to give me this blue. And then I used my lights that are compensated for that white balance to get the appropriate color on his face. The one thing that most, many photographers would miss is this part. It's just one little light hitting that. If I don't do that, he becomes sort of a floating head in a sea of black. It's just something that you're not supposed to notice it. But if it wasn't there, you would notice it. And that's, that's sort of the point, is the manipulate. Now, the one other point is, you notice there's no reflections in any of the glass. And the glass is faceted, so as you go around the room, you know, there should be some reflection in that glass. So as a photographer, as I was saying, part of what being a photographer is, is solving problems. And the way you solve this problem is you set up a light, and then you do what's called flag it. So you use a piece of black fabric that blocks the light from hitting the glass, but it allows it to hit the subject. You're hiding the, the light from the glass itself. This is another example of the time factor. He only had five or six minutes for this portrait. But what I did, they were originally going to give me 30 minutes. And what I said was, I'll trade you. If you let me have two hours ahead of time in his office, I'll do it in five minutes. They're always willing to make that trade. If they can get time back, I'll take time up front in exchange for giving them time back. Straight white. Works with anything. A lot of times when you're working for a magazine, they don't know how the picture is going to be used. And so they ask you, shoot it on white, and then they'll do something else with it later. Maybe they'll change the color, et cetera, et cetera. But I think white can still be a great background if you light it properly difficult sometimes to do a dark skin subject on a white background. There's a little finesse there, but sometimes it makes for really good pictures. It's one of my favorite pictures I've ever made. This is Deontay Wilder. He's the um, heavy, WBC heavyweight champion of the world right now. Um, it was made with two, two lights, and what it is is the assistant is holding a light 13 feet in the air and just sort of tipping it over and it's the light is just sort of cascading down on him, like so. And then there's just a little kiss of fill on the front. The, the kiss of fill is what gives you some sort of value. It's hard to see up here, but you see some value in some of the shadow areas. But the room itself is lit with fluorescent lights. This is the great thing about light, is you create the mood and you create the feeling that you want to create. Um, if I had shot this in the existing light of that room, it wouldn't look anything like this. This is created right out of the box. That's the fun of using your own light. This man is the head of a, a golf club company, one of the biggest in the world, if not the biggest. And what we wanted to do is, is tell that story in a portrait. Like, how do you tell a story in a portrait without having a caption? To me, that's always my goal. How can I tell the viewer this is what this person's about without having a caption for it. So what we did is we took one of the heads of a golf club and had another light to create this shadow behind him. And you kind of know right off the bat what he does. 
Again, shallow depth of field, the actor Dennis Quaid. Um, one of the interesting things about this, and I do this a lot, is when I light somebody, the, the side of their face that's getting the light, which is this side has more of it, you can see his ear, that background is dark. On this side, this side of his face doesn't have light, and this is the side that has some value. If I didn't do that, you lose the edge of his face. So light is very much a control thing, but again, I go back to the time part. I only had five minutes, but I had three, three, around three hours ahead of time to get it all ready, and then you have a, you know, a subject sit in. All of us can do this. We have friends, we have assistants, we have people that can go with us. We have a tripod. I do this a lot when I need to uh, see how the light is going to work before the subject gets there. If I don't have an assistant with me, I'll be the one. I'll put up a tripod, I'll take a picture, I'll have a look at it, and I'll keep manipulating the light until it looks the way I want it to look. Hockey players are notorious for missing front teeth. You've got to show them without, without those front teeth, right? In this case, what I did is I chose something called a ring light. You can, if you can see the, cat, the catch light in his eye, it's a, like a donut shape. The interesting thing about this that was funny to me is, is that digital f manipulation is one of those things that can be used for good, can be used for bad. Um, the client that I shot this for decided that they, di they didn't like that catch light and changed it to just a dot. So, you know, you go to all this trouble to, to make the picture you want, and then somebody gets in there and says, no, we think we'll make it this way. Uh, Rihanna, the, the, uh, the amazing singer. The, the thing about shooting someone like this is they usually have, there's no other way to put it, it's an entourage. There's management, and there's the record label, and there's the PR person, and everybody has their say. And it's one of those things that as a photographer, not only do you have to be in control of the lights and in control of your cameras, you also have to be in control of being someone who can work with people and not make anybody too agitated and let everybody have their say but still get the picture that you're after. It's a dance. I often say to photographers, when you, if you're going to be a photographer and you're, you know, if you're going to school or you're learning or whatever you're doing, learn, learn the craft for sure, learn lighting for sure, learn business for sure, but if you can also do a little bit of psychology, because people skills in photography is almost as important as anything else, particularly if you're going to be a portrait photographer. The one technical thing I would point out here is, is that all the light is being done by a bigger source, and there's a number of sources going on, but the one extra is that little dot in each of her eyes. And all it is is it's a light turned way down just to put that dot in her eye. That's the only thing it's doing. It's not lighting her at all. It's just so that wherever her head went, I would get the dot. So we had a catch light and she had life for her eyes. This is the actor from Everybody Loves Raymond. Um, he's a very big man. He was the brother and he's very expressive. I shot this around the time that he had this amazing role of playing Jackie Gleason, the former comedian. And he is so expressive and I had just had him go. And you have people like this, they count on you to, how best to say it, not make them look bad. But I just let him run with whatever he wanted to do, and I just captured it and captured it and captured it. Ultimately, only one picture is going to get used. But what he was demonstrating was his range, what he can do with his face and how expressive he can be. And from my perspective, that's kind of the role of you know, you as a photographer, is encourage people to bring out their best self. Portraits don't always have to be of a face. To me, this says as much about this ballerina as anything I could do with her face. It's more about the form, and when you think about a portrait, that's really what it is. It's the form, but it can be anything. Portraits don't always have to be about the face. This is actually done with just a couple of lights. One's in a big light like this overhead, maybe a little smaller than that, but it's over, directly overhead like that, and that's doing most of the light. And then there's just like the other photograph I described earlier, like a little kiss of light 
just to give her a little something down in here. Because otherwise, if you don't light this area, it goes into deep shadow and you don't see it. One of the most powerful people in the music business. A lot of times when you're working for a publication or a client, it's it's something that we as photographers often are, we object to, oh my gosh, you're going to put type on my picture. But we all know that if you're, you, if you're having pictures used, you know that there's going to be type on it. As you look around here, everywhere you look, I'm looking at a picture of a D-series camera up here. There's the picture of the camera, and then there's a big empty space for that D-series to sit there, and the logo for the company. So, Part of being a good photographer is you have to allow room for those, those kinds of things. And in this case, if this were to run in a magazine, this would be the gutter, meaning the center of a magazine where the staples are. If you don't leave that space, the magazine editor is going to be very upset and probably not call you for work again. So the idea is leave space. They can always crop it, but if you don't leave the space, they can't create it. These kinds of pictures are fun to do. They're very big productions. You know, you have to rent the chair. You have to put in. I spent, I think, around three thousand dollars just to get this chair between rental and security and everything else. But this gentleman is one of the one of the greatest golf teachers that's ever lived, and uh, everyone refers to him as the little pro. He's he's well, probably about that tall, five five five, something like that. He's not you know not a big man. But he's got this moniker, the, the little pro. So we thought we would push that and have a little fun with it. And he was a sport. He always wears that hat. I kind of feel like he wears that hat to bed. But these kinds of things are fun. to. And it, again, it's another, it's another thing that as a photographer you have to be able to navigate, which is, you know, gathering all the pieces to make the photograph that you want to make. It isn't always just about the cameras and lenses and lights, it's about other things as well. Interesting story here. This man is one of the best surgeons in the world. This surgery suite, which is green on purpose, they designed it that way, like it looks that way to your eye. They designed it that way so that when the, it's kind of gross, but when the surgeon is doing surgery, they can see the blood. Because of the green, you know, red is the opposite of green. Because of the green, you're able to see the, the, uh, the blood more clearly. So they design it that way. So I didn't want to, as a photographer, not represent that and show it, but it's a huge technical challenge because you don't want him to be green. You just want the suite to be green. So we had to build this box around him that he could stand in that was made of black so that he wouldn't get any of the light from the green. And then I would light him with what was essentially magenta light to compensate for that green. And we get correct skin tone but maintain the green. Obviously the box is out of frame, you don't see it. But we had to essentially enclose him so he wouldn't get any of that polluted green light. Does that make sense? Compounded upon that, you have all these monitors that you also have to expose for so that they read. So it's a very complicated technical thing. But for me as a photographer, that's why we're photographers, is to solve problems. Whether you're the kind of photographer who goes out you know, and you're in the freezing cold waiting for the bobcat to appear, you have to solve a problem of how am I going to stay warm. In my case, I'm way too much of a wimp to do anything like that, but I can solve these kinds of technical problems, and it's, you know, to me, it's totally fun. I love different kinds of lenses. This is a super wide lens, obviously, distorts the heck out of them, but he's a big man, and you're trying to emphasize him, and that's, that's what those lenses are for. It's to show off whatever you want to show off in the way you want to show it off. Obviously, there's some light going on as well. You know, if we didn't have any light here, what we would end up with is a silhouette. We'd have beautiful clouds and a beautiful wingspan, and we'd have an absolute silhouette. So you have to add a little light to compensate, but 
fun. This is really an illustration in control. This is, um, at one time she was, I think, one of the world's, if not the world's best snowboarder. And so I went up to her, she lives in Mammoth, Mammoth Mountain in, in California, went up to her home, and what I wanted to do is I wanted to show her kind of in her environment, I mean, there's a million pictures of her snowboarding, but what I wanted to do is kind of bury her up to here in the snow. The thing that would ruin this picture is, is if you let any of the light that's lighting her spill and hit the snow. So there's a little tool that I love to use. It's called a spot projector. It's kind of like some of the spots you see up here. And it enables you to shape the light in such a way that you can keep it just where you want it to be. So on her, but not on the snow. And again, it's the same technique as that other picture I showed you where you're, you're using a, a, a color balance, white balance, that, is, that gives you this blue. And then you compensate in the light so that the warm light contrast with the cool blue. Anybody recognize this man? Big Poppy, David Ortiz from the Red Sox, just retired last year. He is, in person, he's imposing. In a photograph, he's, he's just one of those guys that, he's the nicest guy in the world, but he just walks and talks and carries him in so, himself in such a way that you say, he's one of the greatest athletes I will ever have the opportunity to photograph. And it was truly a pleasure to photograph him. But the technical challenge is a dark-skinned man, you have to provide a highlight on most of his face so that you can see it. I wanted it to be low key, which means there's not a lot of highlight and shadow. It's mostly shadow. But you have to have highlight in enough places so that you can see him. It's dark on dark. It's a challenge. But it's just another way to interpret something. So I photographed Justin Bieber a bunch of times, probably 15 or 20, something like that. This was the fastest shoot I ever did with him, 15 minutes. It was what's called a gallery shoot, which is a number of photographers are going to photograph him all in the same day. So you have your space and somebody else's space. Challenging, for sure. 15 minutes is not a lot of time. So you have to do like a general kind of lighting setup that will cover anything so that no matter what he does, no matter which way he turns, the light's going to work. And so to me, this kind of a, this is one of those white on white on white kind of things where you've got light coming from everywhere but nowhere in particular so no, no matter what he does it's going to be okay those kinds of things are safe but if you do them with a little bit of finesse you'll notice like there's a little bit of light on the side of his face just to kind of shape his jaw you can get a lot done in a very short period of time i love this photograph it's of uh, a cowboy in texas at this old barbecue place and the paint is peeling and all that. All it is is two speed lights. And all I'm doing is one of them is narrowed very, very, very small for his face with a warming gel just to make him stand out against all that blue I've got going on. And then the other one, I left the, origin, the color of the, of the speed light. I didn't do any manipulation to it, which left, made that go blue as well. And so what we end up with is we can see him, all of him, he's lit, but the warmth is here. Does that make sense? And it's supposed to be moody. Now, does this feel like it's dusk? It's not. It's the middle of the day. But we as photographers have the ability with our cameras to control things and make it so that if it's, if it's the middle of the day and you want it to look like it's dusk, you can do that. Cameras today are amazing. They have so much control. We have so much power over them. And the, to me, the most valuable thing is we can see the result instantaneously. So if you're not seeing what it is you want to get, change it. In the old days with film, it was like you might have to wait a couple of days before you figure it out, you blew it. Now you know right on the spot whether you have it or you're not. You can make some changes and move on. 
one of the best photographers living today, Jay Maisel. I had the pleasure of photographing him, but I didn't, I didn't know I was going to. It's a long story, I won't bore you, but essentially someone said, hey, you're here and he's here, would you mind making a portrait of him? And it was the most fun thing I ever did, I think, because I had to figure out and problem solve, like I was talking about earlier, how am I gonna make a picture? I don't have any of my lights with me. I don't have any gear with me. So what I did is I took, you know like when in your hotel room, probably not here in Las Vegas, but in lousy hotel rooms, they have like, like um, grates over the, over the lights. I removed one of them and used it as a light control device. I used a tablecloth off of a table as, to create a softbox. I did all kinds of things so that I could have the tools that I wanted. Everything doesn't have to cost a fortune. There are ways to get this done for, for not a lot. Of, spend the money on things that really matter. When the clouds are good, use them. That's all I can say. Sometimes you need enough light to overpower what the, what the sun is doing, but when the clouds are great, use them. Sometimes portraits can be, they can be action as well. This is actually a boxer working out. I didn't spray that sweat on there. That's real sweat. He's really working out, but all it is is a couple of lights. The light is around behind him, buried in this corner behind the speed bag, bouncing off the wall and coming back at him. And then the other light, as you can see, is right here, just so that you maintain this shape. If you don't have this light here, this is all black and it becomes basically about his face. But by having a light coming this way, you just, the idea is not to look at it. I'm not trying to hit you over the head with this. It's just so, oh yeah, there's an arm there. So he kind of goes together, but where does your eye go? Right there, which is where I want it to go. The great soccer player, Alex Morgan. Um, we were in a studio. This isn't part of the studio. It's where people have lunch and things like that, but I love the window frame. So I, rather than shooting in the studio where you would expect to, I turned around, I said, let's use this. And I lit the inside and the outside super hot white so that all that was left was the frame and her. And so she sort of looks like she's just framed inside this enclosure. Interesting story, a woman who had um, brain surgery, and I just wanted to make a very moody, um, the kind of portrait that says, look how serious this is. People talk about something as serious as brain surgery, but for me, when I saw the scar, it, it hit me in a way that I said, wow, this is, this is significant, more significant than I, you know, because I don't know anyone who's ever had it. It really hit me in a big way. And through light and manipulation, meaning controlling that light and putting light where I wanted it and pose, hopefully I conveyed the significance of what this woman experienced. One of my favorite places to go is a home center, the kind of place where you would buy things. The background here is like a drop cloth made out of silver that we rolled up and then unrolled and it created this background that was kind of interesting to look at, hopefully. Pure light, pure light. There's six lights going on in this, including the lights you see. The idea is just to convey feeling. And again, same kind of, you can use light as well to shape things, shape your subject and whatnot. More shaping. This is in a hotel lobby. You don't have to go out to the most exotic locations. The most fundamental locations work if you have light and control and control of your camera. You can do anything, truly, all of you can. This is in a hotel as well. Hotels get a lot of work from me. I do a lot of, a lot of work in hotels. But you create the light. The light is not there. I put it all there and create the mood and use a short lens to make him look kind of bigger than life. Finally, one light. This is a great skier, Lindsey Vaughn. Um, one of the most amazing women I've ever met in my life. Um, truly, but this is just a single light. 
far, far away, which is what creates the shadow, kind of makes it feel like sunlight. Sometimes it doesn't have to be complicated. Sometimes it can be very simple. But I encourage you all to get out, try some things. I know from talking to photographers that um, using light is daunting because they you say, I just don't have the time. It's, I, I, it's always rush, rush, rush. There's always time if you want to make time and figure out how to make time. Thank you all for being here. Thanks for coming. Appreciate your patience. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Nikon Ambassador Joey Terrell. We're going to take a short 15-minute break here at the 3.30.